I'm Steve for This Week With Cars, and today I want to continue work on my military truck that I dropped an R-Pod onto the back of. Today, I'm going to be installing a backup camera. My R-Pod is already pre-wired for a camera, and it says here on the box that if your camper came pre-wired for it, this install should take only 15 minutes. My install will take a little bit longer because we'll have to figure out a way to get 12 volts to the monitor unit that goes in the cab. One advantage I do have with this camper is that I don't have a very long length from where the camera is to where the monitor is going to be. Normally your camper trailer will be pulled behind the truck, but in my case it's sitting right on top of the truck. The camera system that I'm using is a Furion Vision S. I got this off of Amazon, I'll have the link below. Here's what we got in the box. This is the screen that's going to go in the cab of the truck. We have a camera right here little antenna that's going to attach to it we got a suction cup to hold the screen this is the power adapter for the screen and this power wire would run to the camera but since my camper is pre-wired for a camera I shouldn't have to use this one thing that I thought was really neat this is the power wire for the camera so very easy to plug in I should be able to unbolt the blanking plate that's on the camper just plug this into the existing wiring Put my antenna on and I'll be done with that part. I have a couple options right now. There's four screws that hold this entire thing on. If I took that off, I could replace it with this entire unit. Or on the other hand, I can just undo the four screws right here. It will pop out the little tab for the antenna right there. And then I don't have to disturb that gasket between the RV and the housing. That will all stay in place, just like the factory built it. And I can pop the camera into this housing pretty easily. So it's these four screws that I'm going to remove. All the screws are out. Let's see if we can pop this out. There you go. See the little antenna blanking plate right there. And here's our wire that we connect our camera to. This entire job can really be done in under 15 minutes. Here's the camera plugged in. You do have to snap this connection together pretty tight. Uh, make sure that that is snapped together, otherwise it won't work properly. Pushes together real hard, which is a little precarious up on a ladder like this, especially with as far off the ground as I am. And we just tuck that in there. Screw the camera back on like that. Make sure you leave your ladder here so that you can aim your camera once you have your display hooked up. Now I'm done with the camera installation. Time to wire up the display in the cab. Here's our little display. And to power this, normally you would plug this into the cigarette outlet on your vehicle. But this being a military vehicle, it of course does not have a cigarette outlet. I did hardwire in a USB cable so that I can charge a phone. Unlike a lot of military vehicles, this truck has an alternator that runs at both 12 volts and 24 volts. So I have both voltages available here in the fuse box. Here in our circuit breaker box, we have a couple places where we can hardwire electronics in. We have our ground here. This is our 12 volt source. And if I take this plug out, we have a 24 volt source as well. So I need to take this off, put some ring terminals on here so that it will get power from right here. This wire with the white bar that's the positive so i'll plug that into the 12 volt positive terminal right here then the other one will go to ground Hide the rest of the wiring down here. All 
our display is powered up now, but it shows no signal. So I'm not sure why that is. Okay, there's our parking lines to help us know how far we are and centered when we're parking. Okay, maybe we need to pair it with the camera. While this screen is up, I need to hit the parry button on the bottom of the camera as well. And hopefully these will sync up. On the underside of the camera, there's a little pairing button right there that you need to hit. I figured out what my issue was. This blue light right here indicates that the camera is powered up. And Forest River wires these so that the camera is only powered when it's connected to your truck. So the camera is not running all the time off of the battery for the camper. And in my case, because I mounted this to this uh, military truck, I needed to turn on my lights to activate my trailer um, lighting, and that turns on the camera. Now the camera is working. We can see the stairs. Um, looks like right about at the bottom of the screen is the back of the camper. We get a pretty good view, really wide angle here. And since my stairs are going to come out just above that red line, I think the angle of the camera is just about perfect. This camera system does have a microphone and there's a little speaker in this display. So if someone is standing behind your camper, they can be talking to the driver and giving them instructions. This also has night vision and it's getting dark right now. So I'll back this out and we'll take a look at how well that works as well. To show you what a difference this camera system is going to make, if we look in this mirror, we can't even see the Land Rover or the MG that's behind it. And if we look over on the passenger side of that mirror, we can just barely see a bit of the Land Rover, but we can't see the MG at all. If there was a small car behind me in traffic, I would have no idea that it was behind me if they were close enough. But now if I look at the view from my camera, I can easily see what's around me. I'm going to back the truck outside now. It's not completely dark because there is a haze and the light from the city is reflecting on it. But there is that bright yellow Land Rover right there, so we should see that pop up in our camera. We're still in the building, so the camera is not in night vision mode yet. You can see everything is in color. I'm not sure if the night vision mode is going to be in color or black and white. But let's back out and see how well it works and see if it's in color or not. I think it just flipped over to night vision. You can see everything right now. Look at the bottom of the screen. Everything's in black and white. So I think it has switched over to the night vision mode now. We're starting to see that Land Rover appear. I can see much better in the camera than I can look it in the mirrors. It's Let me show you. We have a pretty good view of that Land Rover. It really pops in the white. But if we actually look at the cameras, we can't see it that well. But in the display, we can definitely make out everything that's parked behind me. I'm gonna back up a little bit more. Okay, we can see the effect that the brake lights have on it there. There's with the brake lights, there's without the brake lights, still pretty good. I think the camera is going to add a huge amount of drivability to this vehicle. 
And as far as I know, I've almost brought this R-Pod up to top spec. I've added solar to it, I've added the camera, and the only thing I haven't added to it yet is an inverter system. So look for me to do something about that in future videos. And if you want to see more videos like this, comment below and click subscribe.